This episode of Techno Buffalo is brought to you, dear friends, by Domain.com. What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the episode of Rent Meters Riffs. There's a lot of stuff in the tech world to talk about, but I've been getting a ton of tweets and questions about Chipgate, uh, the concern over different manufacturers making Apple's A9 chip. I talked about it real briefly in this week's Ask the Buffalo, but I thought I'd go into more detail about what it is and why you should or shouldn't be concerned. I want to thank Mac Rumors and Ars Technica. I did a ton of research to try and explain what's going on in the most succinct way that I could. So a bit of an overview, Apple hired two different companies to make the A9 chips, TSMC and Samsung. And you're probably saying to yourself, what? Samsung? I thought they hated each other. They do, but Samsung and Apple also need each other. The chips that TSMC makes are a little bit bigger and supposedly giving better performance and battery life versus the chips that Samsung makes. That's a story. People have been going a little crazy over it, trying to download apps and go to websites to see which processor they have in their phones. And I'm gonna say mostly just success, but assume I'm talking about success and success plus so well, since the chips inside are the same. All right, we got that out of the way. All right, so last week, depending on when you watch this video, early October, let's just say, Apple addressed concerns or battery life discrepancies between the TSMC and Samsung A9 chips using the iPhone 6S and 6S Plus suggesting that a real-world battery life difference was maybe just like two to three percent uh, between the chips, despite what had been going around the internet about Geekbench battery tests that had pointed towards a way bigger gap. And I'll talk about Geekbench in a minute. So the folks at Ars Technica did an awesome job. They conducted a controlled battery life test in two iPhone 6S models, one with the TSMC chip and one with the Samsung chip. And its findings line up with what Apple said in their statement. Uh, they used two AT&T models, both with SIM cards removed and screen brightness set at the exact same level, and all apps closed. All right, so what about Geekbench that I mentioned earlier? Is Apple just making stuff up? So in Wi-Fi browsing, WebGL, and GFX uh, bench tests, there were performance differences mostly in favor of the TSMC phone, but the variation between the two phones was kind of slight. Uh, there's also a more significant performance difference on the Geekbench 3 tests. That test is not reflective of real world usage. So despite what you read about Geekbench, not reflective of real world usage. So aside from the Geekbench test, which saw a battery life difference of 28% between the two devices, the TSMC phone and the Samsung phone scored within two to three percent of each other uh, in Ars Technica's tests. In Ars' opinion, I call them Ars because we're on a first name basis, uh, in the real world, there's going to be little difference between a Samsung phone and a TSMC phone. And by phone, I mean the chip inside. In fact, here's a quote from Ars Technica. Air quotes begin. So there are definitely circumstances under which a TSMC phone will last longer than the Samsung phone, but it's not a universal problem. A Samsung chip that's mostly idling or even one under modest CPU usage or GPU load, though is going to behave in just about the same way as a TSMC chip, and the kinds of CPU intensive work that the Samsung chip seems to struggle with just aren't that common on smartphones. Most of the time, iPhone 6S battery life should be similar no matter what chip your phone is using. And air quotes. Everybody wants to start a website. My grandmother has two of her own. And trying to figure out where you go to start the website can be tough. Domain.com is a place to go and that next just brilliant idea just lightning bolts into your head. It's one-stop shopping for everything you need for your domain, from web hosting and email and everything in between. Also, there are the 200 plus domain name extensions that are happening now, like .ninja, for example, .nyc, .website, and all kinds of other stuff. So if you have the idea for the next crazy like .ninja website, go check out domain.com and save 20% on domain names and web hosting. We just use the coupon code TECHNOBUFFALO, all one word, at domain.com's checkout. When you think domain names, just think domain.com. It's in the name. So according to Apple, and again, of course, Apple made the phones. They want things to seem good. But according to those folks, a comparison of just two devices is way too small of a sample size to make any sort of meaningful predictions about the performance between iPhones with the Samsung processor and the ones with the TSMC chips. As ours points out, no one but Apple's resources to collect enough data uh, from enough devices to get an accurate picture of performance. So Ars Technica's findings do line up though with what Apple says it has seen in both lab testing and data gathered from hundreds of thousands of customers. Uh, Apple has also said that the variation between the TSMC and Samsung chips that it observed is well within its manufacturing tolerances. That was a quote from Apple. And is a level of variation that can be seen between devices that have the exact same chip from the exact same manufacturer. So here are two schools of thought. Do you go with what Ars Technica found, what Apple found, that really no difference at all? Or do you say Geekbench 
Geekbench, Geekbench, I saw a difference. There's a big difference, 28%. I don't want a phone that has a Samsung chip in it. You can pick which side of the fence you're on. If it was me and I wanted an iPhone, I'd just go to the store and buy one, not really care what chip's in it. You're not gonna notice that big a difference. At least presumably, not that big a difference. What Geekbench tests, again, are not representative of real world usage of a phone. So if what you use your phone for is Geekbench tests, then yeah, it's gonna make a difference. If you use your phone for is normal like phone stuff, uh, then probably just exhale a little bit and don't worry. I know I got a little technical. I talked probably pretty fast. There's a lot of stuff to go over, but the moral, take anything away from this video, is really just don't worry. It's a phone, enjoy it. Your battery life's gonna be fine. Uh, anyway, what do you guys think about this chip gate issue? I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. Leave in the comments down, down in this area. Until next time, I'm John Ranger from Techno Buffalo, and I'll talk to you friends in the next video.